I'm here with Smelebrity, Dr. Pamela Dalton from the Monell Chemical Census Center. What do you guys do there? <laughs> chemical senses research, smell, taste, and chemical irritation. Oh, interesting, that's a whole lot. So what do they all have, I guess, in common on the chemistry level? Ah, so they're all sensory systems that respond to chemicals in our environment. Chemicals that we breathe, chemicals that we put in our mouth, or chemicals that we put on our skin. You are a cognitive psychologist? Yes. Okay. By training. By training. Yes. And so what does um, cognition, right, have to do with scent ah, okay. and how we smell? So some of what we smell comes from the chemical molecule itself what the quality of the odor is, okay. what the concentration is. But the bigger driver of how we experience it is what happens in our brain when we remember that we've smelled it before. Do, is it associated with something pleasant or unpleasant? Right. Does, it, do, does it make us scared? Does it make us afraid? Or do we relax when we smell it? So really, the top-down effects of cognition have a bigger impact on how we experience smell more than the actual qualities of the chemical molecule. Molecule. Okay, so this is what's driving when I smell ocean and I think of good memories of when I was a younger kid at the beach. Yes. Okay. The, the olfactory sense is a highly emotional system and we think that's partly because of the way that the brain is wired. That the limbic system where we experience emotions and also store emotional memories is right. actually, the olfactory system is actually part of that and interacts very closely with it. So when we smell something, mm -hmm. rather than identifying what it is, we tend to remember or think about where we've experienced it before the person who wore that cologne right the scent of a favorite vacation spot or something that might be very unpleasant now yeah, let's talk about unpleasant scents mm -hmm. now what happens is you were in the Guinness Book of World Records for the world's I want to make sure I get this right. Worst mal odor. That's that? correct oh okay <laughs> yeah. how did you how did you do that accomplishment well, I was approached to find an odor that was universally malodorous, that people all over the world <laughs> Everybody thought was a bad it. odor. Everybody had to dislike it. Because there isn't enough of those in the world, That's right? right? That's right. <laughs> And the idea was it could be used for dispersing a crowd or keeping people out of an area. Right. And so we had to test people that came from different backgrounds and cultures to okay. ensure that it was universal. Right, right. And you were saying that there are some challenges there because scent isn't universal, right? It varies depending on the culture. So some things that might smell good in one culture um, might not necessarily be considered um, a good scent in another. Right, right. And some things that smell good in one culture that people eat, for example, because they were always brought up with it, you know, might be really disgusting right. to other people. Right. You brought up durian. Durian fruit, yes. Right. Durian which you fruit. really have to be, you have to be raised in a culture that consumes it before you can really to understand it. Yeah, find the scent it. pleasant. Yes, that. yeah. And how does that differ from taste? Taste is, as far as we know, taste is hardwired. So all, all mammals like things that are sweet and will reject things that are bitter at okay. birth until they learn which bitter substances are not dangerous because bitter can be poisonous right, right, in nature. Right. Okay. But we don't seem to have any evidence that we're born with any preferences or reversions for odors. It seems as though we're sort of a blank slate in our experience rights on our slate, what we learn to like and what we learn to dislike. So there's a, a point in our lives, maybe as infants, where we smell like stinky feet and it's no big deal? Like Have you ever bother? seen a toddler turn up their nose at their diaper? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> no, of I'm course confused. not. But by the time children are four and five years old, they start mimicking the odor preferences or reversions of the adults around them. So that's another piece of evidence that it's a learned phenomenon rather than something we're born with. How did that help you accomplish your malodor? <laughs> well, we decided that because we needed to find something that was universal, it probably had to be an odor that was of biological origin, either okay. something that was rotting or decomposing composing like sulfur right. compounds or maybe the smell of vomit we used that in one of our test right. series so something that would be universal because it indicates illness or, yes or okay. danger to people right and, and certainly that's why we tried the odor of you know feces and urine mm. simply because that's not only an unpleasant smell but it also represents a source of something that can be dangerous a pathogen right right, right. so we learn to avoid it exactly okay exactly. and what you came up with 
How would you describe it? <laughs> well, we started with the mixture that smelled the, the most like a really dirty public toilet, like a porta potty that oh, you know has, okay. had waste sitting in there for okay. months. And You've months, already scared you know? off people like me with the smell odor. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And then we heard from somebody who had read about our our research that claimed that he had tried to cover up a sewer backup in his restaurant okay. with a cherry air freshener and said it was even worse than the smell of the sewage backup. And so I thought to myself, wow, there's an idea. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. That's Here we go. Hilarious. So we added that sweet fruity scent to the this smell of the bathroom malodor and we had a winner. Is there anything molecularly that's going on that made the scent of something really good and something really bad equal worse? Or is <laughs> I think part of it is that, it, number one, the, the scent didn't mask the malodor, and that's okay. the problem okay. with masking rather than removing odors with other technology. Right. Masking doesn't always work. And masking, masking works in your brain because one odor can dominate another so that you don't smell it. I see. But you're not getting rid of the malodor. You're just covering it up. Right, you're distracting Perceptually and distracting. Okay. In this case, there was no masking. There was like a synergy. A <laughs> you know? synergy, yes. And that's... so we think it was almost that the sweet smell made people think it was something you wanted to smell. And so they took a big whiff of it. <laughs> and then they got hit. With and then they got really delivered nasty. a bomb. Wow, that's exactly. no good. Yes. Well, congratulations <laughs> on you. that achievement. It's been Thanks. wonderful talking to you. Absolutely. And I hope to see you again in the future. Absolutely. All it's right. Fun. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye. <laughs>